this evening. How can I help you? Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing all right. All right. Yeah, I am calling to check the status of an uh, autopsy toxicology and uh, incident report that I've ordered, and it's been over, over like two months now, approximately. And I want to know what is the delay with that. Okay. Take a look here. What was the first and last of the decedent? Uh, the first name was Javion, and that is J A V I O N. And the last name is McGee. M A G E E. All right, peace and blessings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what you just heard is the beginning of a call that I had with the North Carolina Chief Medical Examiner's Office regarding the autopsy, toxicology, and incident report of Javion McGee. Now, if you've been following this channel for the past month or so, uh, we've been covering this case. J.V. McGee was a 21-year-old truck driver who was found in Henderson, North Carolina <clears throat> with, you know, a rope around his upper body. And, you know, he was found in some very suspicious circumstances. Now, uh, we've uncovered a lot of information. And now we are waiting for the... Vance County Sheriff Department to make the official ruling and so that you know the the proper people can get all the evidence and I uh, move forth as they see fit well one thing that I have done is ordered uh, the medical report toxicology report and uh, the incident report and I, I've been waiting for a couple of months so I decided to call the medical examiner's office you you'll hear you heard the first part of the call and you're also going to hear the second part of the call. And uh, what this call tells me is that they're once again, not really uh, doing the utmost to get this investigation done. But it also tells me that there are some signs of uh, procrastination or possible cover up because of things that you're gonna hear in this call that should have already been done or would be not hard to do if they are saying things happen the way that uh, they said that that they happened. So what, without further ado, uh, I'm going to play this call and then I'll stop it and, and point out some things that I thought were interesting in talking uh, with the chief medical examiner uh, representative. Uh, but also, as always, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you for liking and sharing the video. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please, I would love for you to do so. Just one second and we'll be right back with the call. From local stories to Wayne County news, get ready to dive into everything happening in North Carolina with Taylor House Publishing. Got a story to share? Shoot us an email at taylorpublishinghouse at gmail.com. If you're looking to publish your book or need some top-notch mentorship, we've got your back. Join the excitement with the one and only Richard Taylor, right here at Taylor House Publishing. Speak with Richard directly at 919-587-7782. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and invite your family and friends to watch. From Lake County to the Carolina Coast, Taylor House, Raven knows you love most. So man on YouTube, don't miss a beat Local stories that keep you on your face Taylor House, we got the school Taylor House, come on Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing all right. All right. Yeah, I am calling to check the status of an uh, autopsy toxicology and uh, incident report that I've ordered. 
and it's been over, over like two months now, approximately. And I want to know what is the delay with that. Okay, take a look here. What was the first and last of the decedent? Uh, the first name was Javion, and that is J A V I O N. And the last name is McGee, M A G E E. Correct. Okay. Let me uh, write down some notes here just in case I'm going to pass something on to my supervisors, okay? All right, right there. Red flag. Now, when he realized it was Javion McGee and he confirmed the date of his demise, you heard him say, okay. Okay. He said, I am going to uh, write something down and take some notes so I can pass this on to my supervisor. Why would he need to pass something on to his supervisor? This lets me know that they are having or, or this is a very uh, sensitive case for them. You know, because I'm just asking about the delays. What's going on? Why would he have to take some time to pass something on to a supervisor if I'm just asking what is the delay with this case. That lets me know that, yes, JVR McGay is, is, is a special case. As many people have said, the medical examiners and the coroners all have to be in cahoots for these things uh, to occur as they uh, have or people think they have occurred to uh, formulate a narrative that, you know, Javion did it to himself as opposed to somebody else doing it to him, uh, him being uh, severely beaten uh, and, and things of that nature. So uh, that immediately, you know, raised my spidey senses, as, as, as they say, uh, because why would you need to take some notes and pass something on to your supervisor? That lets me know, okay, well, everybody knows about this case and, you know, we have to be very careful, you know, about what's going on. So uh, let's play the call. All right. Thank you. And what's your name? My name is Charles. Thank you so much for your help, Charles. Seems to be moving along pretty quickly, actually. What I can see is that uh, they don't give us all the details. They give us basically a series of steps that the file has to go through. We can kind of follow the steps as it goes through, if that makes any sense. Um, so what I can see is that typically the investigative report is one of the first things that we have signed off. That's just you know, the police officer that attended when they found the deceased. Um, but that looks like that's still being filled out. Obviously, you know, the, the individual case is, you know, going to make a difference person to person. Uh, but they're so there you see him saying that the investigative report is still being filled out. And this is about two months later. And he said, well, obviously, you know, from person to person, it differs. Mind you. The narrative is they just found them. You know, they went through all of those things, uh, you know, that they put out in the statement. So what is so hard about writing that out? Uh, this, it's been about two months and they said the investigative report has not been done by the officer who attended the scene. And uh, he said, typically, that's one of the first things that are signed off on. And so which leads me to believe that they are still trying to get the story together as we or other people expose certain information. So if they write something down on that, that, that report that contradicts things that, you know, the parents may know, the lawyers may know, or we have un 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 uncovered, then 
it will once again raise suspicions as, as to what really happens. Uh, that lets me know that once again, they are uh, dragging their feet uh, with this investigation and with putting the complete narrative, official narrative together to send to uh, the chief medical examiner's office. They're filling that out and it looks like it still says needed. And I can see that the autopsy report is still listed as needed. Um, it look, does look like they're filling out the death certificate. I already have a, a date written on that, but it still needs to be signed off. And of course, they're not going to do that until they have all the aut autopsy results and stuff in. And because those are all the files that we request um, or that we send out for request, we typically don't send those out until we have them all in together and signed off. Um, and you said you had a request out for information, correct? Yeah, I think I sent that request out probably the end of September. Uh, so that's, you know, going on. A, 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 so now you said the... Uh, so he said that the autopsy report is still needed to be filled out. And the toxicology report still needed to be filled out. Now, if this case is cut and dry as the uh, police and the sheriff and, you know, everyone is saying it is, then what is the holdup with filling these things out? Now, he did say that there is the certificate of demise that has uh, already had a date on it, but they are waiting on it to be signed off as well. And typically they, they don't sign that off until they get all of these documents uh, back from the respective places. And so um, it looks like that it's going to, according to him that you're going to, you're going to see, it's going to be quite some time uh, before all of these documents get signed off on, which is going to make the quote unquote investigation last longer, giving people more time to forget, move on to other things and emotions to die down uh, regarding uh, this case. But let's continue. The investigation report was still being filled out. Yeah, according to us, it looks like it hasn't been signed off or anything, um, which typically means that there's something they're working on filling out. Who was uh, there? Because who, of the problem. Who was there? Like when you say something they are working on filling out, who do you mean by that? That would be police. Okay. The investigative stuff is filled out by police. So you got... Um, okay, go ahead. So there he mentions, hey... Now, um, typically when that's not filled out, that means something that they are still working on. What could they be possibly working on other than creating their story, getting their story together to make sure uh, everything lines up? You know, because according to them, hey, it's cut and dry. You know, we found them, you know, Sheriff Sher Brain, yeah, he, you know, wrapped around his neck 11 times and, uh, you know, he, 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 he bent over just a little bit. It was just enough you know, pressure is very cut and dry. So why is it taking you guys forever to get this report together? Once again, raises my red flags. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so whenever someone's called and or the police are called and they say, hey, we found a body, they have to go and at least write down what was at the scene, what the condition of the body looked like, stuff like that. So apparently they're still filling out that information for whatever reason. I really couldn't tell you that. Um, he says, for whatever reason, I really couldn't tell you that, which means he even knows that, yeah, this is, this is not normal. What, why, why is it taking them so long to fill out the information? Um, but I can see But that. is that normal? Is that normal to take that long to fill out, you know, just what happened? And, and find in the yeah, scene. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Most of the cases in here go from eight months to seventeen months so Wait. for everything to be coming through. So obviously, you, the turnaround on the actual decedent we, we do in like ten days, obviously. But uh, you know, the results can take a long time. It really depends. So you're saying that? Saying it. 
Yeah. So you saying that the the, the results to get all of the uh, the uh, as you said the investigation. So you said it it could normally take probably like you know anywhere from a year to a year and a half to. Well, I, again, what I'm saying is that I don't know what it will take, but I've seen cases go you know from beginning to end as short as seven to eight months, and I've seen them go from as long as fifteen to seventeen months. But, you know, some of those were where we just found a skeleton. So we had okay. to do DNA extraction and stuff. Okay. Not all cases are the same. Some people have been dead for years and we find their bodies. You okay. Know, so it really just depends, you know. Okay. Um, they have to do tests just to make sure they know what they're talking about. And if we give out incorrect information, you know, that could, you know, not only lead to lawsuits and stuff like that. So... We just want to make sure that we get everything correct. Um, I know that there's a, you know, a bit of solace that you need as a, you know, relative to get that cause and manner and everything fiddled out and figured out so that they can work on the case. But as of right now, I just don't have any information from the autopsy side. Um, but my presumption would be it would it's waiting on some test results or something to come back from a different lab. We have about five facilities we use to test, you know, samples and stuff because we get about a hundred bodies a day. So we just, you know, we're working through them as fast as we can. Okay. So then the medical examiner goes in almost to a sort of a police filibuster that we've been hearing. Well, you know, we, they're probably waiting on some kind of report to come back from some kind of lab. Uh, we have over five labs and, you know, we get a hundred bodies a day. And, you know, it, it, it all, and, and I know you as a, you know, the family would like some sort of soul. It's, it's almost like, once again, he knows how these things are going. He, he knows, as um, mentioned earlier in the call, that, you know, the J.V. McGee case has gone a lot of attention. And so that's why he's having to make notes to pass on to a supervisor. And, you know, he goes on into the, you know, well, yeah, it's going to take uh, eight to 17 months, he said. Eight to 17 months to, for them to, and I didn't ask him specifically how long does it normally take for, the, for police to fill out an investigative report. Now, once again, the investigative report is, you know, cut and dry. It's the same thing that you have put on the uh, police report unless they are taking it more serious and doing some more investigation. Uh, but, you know, you can definitely tell that this guy knows what to say and how to say it uh, to keep people at bay. Now, let's continue with the end of the call. Okay. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. All right. And so... I just... What what is the quickest you've ever seen one? I mean, I've seen the quickest turnaround. Like I said, it was about five months, and uh, that was pretty obvious. It was you know okay, the okay, guy killed yeah, in yeah. Of a police officer. Okay, so okay. It was pretty cut and dry. Okay. Um, so okay. So all right, I think so. So they don't give you any notes on the autopsy. They're just telling you what still needs to be done. Yeah, they tell us what has been done and what still needs to be done. They try to keep everything private just because, you know, news organizations, stuff like that will call us too, and they don't want us to accidentally leak anything, so they keep it all covered up, you know. Okay. All right. What was your name again? Uh, my name is Richard Taylor. You're Richard Taylor. Okay. And I certainly thank you for your help, and, uh, you know, I really no appreciate that. All right, sir, you have a blessed day. All right. All right, so there you have, you know, once again, him saying that, you know, the closest turnaround would be five months. And that was for someone who, you know, unalived himself in front of a police officer, which was cut and dry, and they didn't have anything to do with it. So we're only two months in uh, to J. Beyond McGee's quote unquote investigation. So according to this guy, it could be another three uh, to five months or, or even a three to, you know, year, year and a half before, uh, 
you know, they come to some kind of conclusion and we get the official reports on what happened uh, to our brother, which once again is going to uh, leave the family in, le in, in limbo. But hopefully before then, uh, there's going to be some action that is taking place, uh, which proves that it didn't happen the way they said they happened. And then again, at the end, you hear him asking about my name, uh, which I don't know what, you know, what, why would you need my name for? But that may go into the notes that he's going to be passing on to a supervisor concerning someone just checking on the status of our reports that they had ordered. So uh, this is a case, once again, we're going to continue to follow, keep our uh, eyes on. You know, I was expecting, you know, the, the, them to be done with this, quote, investigation by now. But he, you clearly heard them say that they haven't even filled out the investigative report, which leads me to believe that uh, they are still trying to paint the uh, or, or construct a clear cut narrative or, or clear cut uh, chain of events which uh, absolves them of any guilt in this situation. And so, um, you know, this was a very interesting call. It gave me a lot of uh, insight on what to expect going forward and, you know, how to, how to move uh, in regards to, you know, making sure that they uh, know that people are still uh, concerned about this case. Nevertheless, uh, you guys tell me what you think in the comments. If you have any suggestions, you know why to call me, 919-587-7782. I thank y'all for watching. Uh, peace and blessings. Y'all have a blessed night. I'm out. Richard Taylor, right here at Taylor House Publishing. Speak with Richard directly at 919-587-7782. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and invite your family and friends to watch. From Lake County to the Carolina Coast, Taylor House bringing the news you love most. Tune in on YouTube, don't miss a beat. Little stories that keep you on your feet. Taylor House, we've got the school. Taylor House publishing.